Hello, all you hardcores out there. How are you doing? It's Big P here. You know, don't you? You know, the biggest gob in sport. We say the things that nobody else dare say. Now, today, today we're joined by Max or Maximus or Maximilian or Austin Maxi 1750. I don't know. Or is it the breadcrumb or we'll call him my favourite, shall we? Big Oaf. How are you doing, Big Oaf? How you doing, Turkey T? <laughs> I've, heard, I've heard that you've uh, signed a deal with Dennis. Aren't you? You've got a deal with Dennis, aren't you, as a pro? Yeah, I mean, we're not... <clears throat> is, is, is Yeah, we've got something in principle now. Um, I'm, I'm out off to see Dennis. I'm actually going out to see him in Jersey. You uh, always have a look at me to see where I'm at. Um. So you know maybe got, it's like Dennis is fucking signing Diego Crowley's or something, isn't it? Back in the day when he nearly signed him, are you? He's gone from nearly signing Diego Crowley's to signing you, Max. It's it's like this, isn't it? It's like almost it's like Mark Tibbs going from Dylan White to Emily Bridges. <laughs> yeah, no, I know, yeah, and uh, that other bird, <laughs> some, all the other birds from that brothel is gone. E um, Ellie Brook. <laughs> Ellie Brock, good old Mark Tibbs. He's always there or thereabouts, isn't he? Yeah. If it puts bread on his table, why not? He's a got way. a better batting average than me lately, Max. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, yeah. Right, uh, Max. Calla Sourland. You've got a, you, you're not happy with, with what's going on. Come on, Max. Tell your uncle Porky what's gone on. I just seen this misfits boxing. They're just doing it again. I'm not interested, and it's it's annoying. It's degrading the sport. <clears throat> um, do you know what gets me? Angry, Mark? Has it made you angry, Max? It's not angry. I just I just think there's got to be some sort of consistency to the board now because they're shooting themselves in the foot, aren't they? So you got on one stage, right? You've got the last show they had that crap, whatever it was. Basically, they, what they're doing is they're getting local lads who are popular on YouTube, seeing them fight outside Weatherspoons. Great, we see it in the ring, right? That's what's happening, right? And you're seeing it absolute bin, bins, you know what I mean? Stupid women doing the same. So, you know, it's just absolute garbage. And you got Mark Tibbs, and I'm not, I'm not, this is not me. Really having to go at Mark Tibbs, this is having to go at the board here a little bit, yeah. right? Is that he's in the corner for Ellie Brook? Well, I know about 18 different former trainers who've either done a charity gig, as in corner for someone for charity for Mick Millen Cancer, not for Misfits Boxing. That's good, it's like a whole money intensity for them, a charitable event. And got their license revoked. Eighteen people. Yeah, Chris. So uh, not Chris. Ryan Rowlandson lost his, didn't he? Yeah. So you know, and I, and and well, that's that's one I don't even know about on that list. So really, if you got someone with quite a bit of money, let's say you know millions, they could go after the board for the Equality Act, and they're being hot water the board. Yeah. So they're going to either have to do, if someone goes after him, they're going to have to do two things. Either revoke Mark Tibbs's license in theory, or they're going to have to do the license they've banned and revoked in the past they have to give him back. Max, why are you turning into a crime buster all of a sudden? Not a crime buster, but I like consistency. I like yeah. equality. Now, Okay, if you want to do these shows, everyone else can do them. Why is Kala doing them? Doesn't he still have a, a, a board control license for promoting? Listen, I've seen emails a few weeks ago where board were having a pop at a certain person who's a license. So I'm not going to say his name on it. And they, they, were, they, they made, well, actually, it were, it were from, from about 10 months ago, but they were actually more or less not getting heavy, but more or less stating. You can't get involved in this kind of thing. So why all of a sudden now is it the is it the end thing? 
what what's changed and why at board not coming out to speak about this you know i mean i just think it's ridiculous um i don't like the factors where you know and i, I don't have nothing against mark tibbs he's got like a, a, what he's doing with tommy fletcher johnny fish nurse him along He's doing all right with him. Well, he's got to pay bills, Max, and he? he's got to pay bills. So if you can I, put pounds, I understand him. that. I understand that, and I understand why he's doing it because yeah. he don't have the Dylan White stay. He doesn't have, and understand what Ebony Bridges is doing. I understand she can scrap and fight, and we particularly don't like her, etc. But she sells, and I understand these things. But this is the board's doing, not Mark Tips. Board have got to look at this where, well, do we got to go one or the other here? We can't just sit on the fence. You know, what, what's so let's say if Chris Smedley decided to do, let's say he got uh, involved with his, his son's Black Hack promotions and cornered one of them, actually got involved physically and cornered one of them, would that be allowed? Well, they've got to let it go then because he's got a case then because he's look, he will say, look, Mark Tibbs was in the corner for Ellie Brook. And trained her for that white collar event. Yeah, you know I mean, no good. Yeah, yeah, I see where you're coming from, Max. I see where you're coming from. All right, then, Max. Uh, let's move on from 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 Callas' situation. This misfits thing because it, it it's starting to give me an ulcer. Uh, there's two things that give me an ulcer: Calla and Tony Bellew. And Calla with this misfits is is upsetting me to me, Max. Okay. I, don't, I don't know what to say about it. It's a joke. What's happening to sport that we love immensely, and these people are showing what they're about. Where there's a pound note. Oh, oh, can we see? Can you all see all the boxing fraternity? Can you see how grubby? That's what it is, isn't it? Grubby. These lot are around a pound note. Could you imagine them as drug dealers in the nineties or? Oh. Big cigarette dealers, they will get their throats slit. That's what would happen. Grubby, a lot of them. They're showing the true colours. It's embarrassing. and But that's what happens where there's a pound note, isn't it? Well, they they basically, you look at the qualities. If you look across the three networks, DAZN, BT Sport, and Sky Sports, DAZN... You can tell they're watering down their products so much. Watering down? They've got tag teams coming on, aren't they, now? Yeah, this is what I mean. So Tag team team boxing? What on earth is good? What are these people getting involved in? Do I keep looking in the mirror and keep saying this to myself? Tag team boxing? Nobody's doing out about it. Nobody's saying a word. What are we going to get now? Are we going to get IFL? And all the rest of them, are they going to put it on this? Put it on Calla and say, Calla, come on. Enough's enough now. Or are these people going to keep flocking to these shows and fueling it? Because that's what all these YouTubers are doing. They're fueling this. And soon it's going to be taking over boxing and there ain't going to be no boxing. It's, it's, it's a joke. And if I, I'm honest... I can see why the likes of Julian and people traditionally who, who loved the sport for what it was are bowing out of it because they're not, it's getting to a stage where they're not interested in it at all now. Um, you know, you can see why. You can see why the dis, you know, the, the displeasure of it is, yeah, you don't want to see it. So, you know, it's, you see why, where the zones kind of, unique selling point is now they're going down the youtube route aren't they now that's where they're going the youtube route now they're they're putting less boxing mainstream on now you know that's where it's all heading now isn't it we've got that tommy fumbles fighting jake paul you've got two blokes there i mean and and, i mean this is they've not even got it ring yet what pair of them are what six and oh and seven and oh or some or eight and oh right six and oh and eight and oh right they're they're both undefeated fair enough right even they're dragging their asses about how much money they want to get in the ring. 14 fights between them. Am I, am I, am I, am I, am I walking down wrong road or something here? Am I a lollipop? Or do, do, do other people just not see what I'm seeing with my eyeballs? 
how many how many fights do you know? How many fighters in the past do you know which is one six and oh and one seven oh that has gone on pay per view? How many uh, do you remember any? Yeah, I remember a fighter, non and non fighting Mayweather on pay per view, Conor McGregor. Okay, then. Okay, we take that one away. Okay, as in proper boxing. Uh, I think Lomachenko, Lomachenko after a couple of fights, one T fighting on a big shows. Was he main event on pay per view though? I think he will. I think he will have been Lomachenko. I'm not. I'm not sure. But he were He had a world title. Uh, he was fighting for a world title in his second fight, one and he won one in his third, didn't he? So you can more or less say Lomachenko. You put that him in that bracket, can't you? But there aren't many others. Who else could there be? And he's a double Olympic champion. Exactly. These guys aren't. And I tell you what, I will give credit to a certain extent to Jake Paul because he doesn't have to do this. Um, He has clearly knuckled down. And but I, I can see it being an excuse from Fury Camp. I can see it being pulled in the next two weeks. Well, and to drag it out and build it up even more so Tommy gets more money. Yeah, something like that. Or Tommy feels his nappy because he's done it twice before. I'm not accepting the airport one where you enter airport, Homeland Security grab you. I'm not accepting that one. Sorry, Tommy. You lied that one. You lie, lie, pants on fire, my friend. Then I'm not expecting the, I thought, the, the Zoom call, the Zoom press conference when John Fury knee punched the screen. I'm not, ex I'm not, you know, believing that one because who does a press conference over Zoom? I'm sorry. Come on. Oh. They're just, they're just manipulate. But people believe it. People believe it. Max, would you fight Shane Fury in an organised Queensbury bout? Queensbury rules bout? No, because it's off the table now, isn't it? Yeah, but if it were on the table, would you? If it was decent money, yeah. Max, you'd need a million quid surgery after Shane had done a surgeon job on you, mate. I don't think it would. Oh, Max, oh, are you working on your footwork? <laughs> Thanks for the confidence, uh, Russ. I'm Thanks. For joking, that. Max. Look, Shane's a big dude, isn't he? Yeah. He's a big dude. And you're not a big dude, are you, outside of Shane? You're a little dude. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know what I mean, you yeah. need to fight somebody on your level, Max, if you're going to come back now. You, you suggested Mark Bennett to me the other month, didn't you? He'd be too much for you, Mark Bennett. Mm, Mark Bennett. You probably yeah. need Max, a couple of plumbers from, from Hungary. Who are hungry? That's a good one, isn't it? Three <laughs> plumbers, Max, who are hungry. <laughs> you need somebody like that fighting on a Dennis ticket deal, punch their heads in, make you send look good. Before you know where you are, you had three wins and you're four and one. So yeah. You're now one and one. Yeah, so it's one and one, but. I don't know why that last one wasn't on box rec, the one with Judy, and I don't get that. So why did yeah. that the one the loss you had? No, no, the one after that when I went out with Julian, did I won that, that one. Long? Yeah, so that should be two and one for some oh, reason. How come you're not two and one then, Max? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Don't get it. Are you don't want to play into box rec or were it just an exhibition you were in, Max? <laughs> No, it's it's definitely recorded, but I don't know why. I, oh, I ain't, I'm not really bothered to be honest. Max, when, Max yeah. I thought you were gonna fucking put. Uh, sorry for swearing. I thought you were gonna put uh, the division on notice. You were telling me last year. Shush you, shush you. you what, look, what would you, you give you, yourself out of ten, Max, for your for your print division on notice? What would you give yourself out of ten for your banter? <laughs> 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 I've got a big ego. <laughs> well, we know this. We know this. You know what I mean? Men want to be with you and fucking women want want you. You know what I mean? So oh, All these little secret phone calls you've been doing with Dennis and secret meetings, is it all leading up to uh, Dennis uh, dig, digging up uh, Danny Williams for your marks? <laughs> Danny Williams, Christ. Jeez. No, we'll see. We'll see what happens, Russ, on a serious note. We just see how it's just a journey. We see how far it goes. You know what I mean? That's all I can do. Yeah. You know I mean? All right, Max. Okay. Moving on to uh, more important things, Max, than talking about your pro career, uh, your big oaf. Uh, Anthony Yard, what do you think to fight? 
Do you know what? The the stoppage wasn't convincing for me. No. Um, no, because if you slow mode it down, yeah, well. he got he landed a punch on the blow of the head, which caused him to go down the back of the head. And yet again, Steve Gray did not pick up on it. Pisses me off. And anti yard, that was a career best performance by him. A career best performance. Nearly pulled it off, to be honest. And you know, I think to be fair, even he's lost that Anthony Yard, his stock has risen massively still. Um, I think it has. And and if you look at the fight itself, uh, Tundi, I'm sorry, mate, you're waiting that day. Um, I think Yard should have been in there still instead of throwing it in and saying, oh, it's over. You know, I think Yard, you've got to bear in mind, there's three belts on the line, three belts on the line. There was a lot at stake. And the work he put in, I can't remember what round it was stopped. It was levelling him. Um, I think, you know, Arthur was only maybe a round ahead at best. At best. Yeah. You know, and, you know, and Tundi could sort of threw in the tower a bit early. I thought it wasn't justified. I, if I was Yard, I'd be feeling how Wilder did after the second fight with Fury. That would be my reaction by Yard. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I would, because it wasn't a convincing stoppage. Would you say that was a convincing stoppage? Uh, I think he would have done money really hard. I think he I, was... I think he still had a bit Tundi in him yet. It, didn't he? Anyway, Tundi stopped it as well, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. Tundi stopped it, and he didn't need to stop it. I still think he had... He still was justified for... Because he no, look, yeah, he, he, he took a lot of punishment, mate. He took a lot of punishment. You never so saw. So did Peter Beef. Peter Beef were riding shots, mate, wasn't he? Mm. Look, Not it, shots, but he got it. But he took a lot of punishment, yard, didn't it? Did you see him day after? He saw uh, it. He didn't look. He didn't look. He didn't look fucking. He didn't look brilliant, did he? We're all swollen up. He did it. He did best. Didn't he? Julian called it, didn't he? He said, "Look, yard, will have his moments, but." Beat your people, get to him. Yeah, but like I said, when we say get to him, it wasn't a convincing stoppage, like I said. You don't, wasn't, you don't think that was a convincing stoppage. You want to get a man killed, Max? It wasn't a convincing stoppage. Look how many punches he took in, before they stopped. Yeah, well, well, yeah but he, he, he gave as good as he get. He gave back. So, you know, I'm not being far. I'll give credit where credit is good. I mean, I don't, I'm not a personal fan of Yard and his, how he was before and I thought it was a hype job, but his stock has massively risen. I thought it wasn't like, oh, he got knocked out. It was a blow to the back of the head, which Steve Gray should have, you know, looked at. Uh, that caused the knockdown. And he should have had time to get up and go again. He should have had time. I know his stock's risen and that, but should we be really talking about somebody who's just been knocked out as stock risen? But should we? Because the guy lost, didn't he? he? Stepped up for the second time. He's been knocked out twice in world title fights, hasn't he? Yeah. So, uh, so you okay? Then here's the other argument. So, would you say he's he's devalued? No, he's not devalued. I'd say his stock's gone up, but I think there's probably a tinge of something inside him, probably thinking, Do you know what? Maybe if I'd have consolidated at British level and had a couple of defenses and learnt me craft a bit better. I'd have been better in another year, 18 months, going up against this guy when he's really done. Do you know what I mean? So he might get another bite at Cherry yet. Well, yeah, I think he's still worthy of another Cherry. I still think well, I thought that... Mean, that Charlie, they don't lie, aren't they, already? But the thing is, is that, if he looks at him, you know, his last fight, let's say his last win against Lyndon Arthur, let's say. Yeah. Totally different fight. Time, time beat him absolutely perfectly coming in timed it but have you noticed though uh beat your beef and music they sort of fight in a way similar in some ways like you know when they get it laid on them they yeah. come back three times harder do you notice that yeah and annie joshua did the same to music try laying it on him and music all of a sudden goes in bloody smoke and david blaine mode and he can't see him and throws about 10 punches at him. So, there's something with these Eastern Europeans, they do all the same. 
their work rate, they outwork their opponent during that round. Yeah. Does that make sense? They do more than their opponent. Yeah, yeah. It, it does, Maxie. They must yeah. have a lot, don't they, like you? <laughs> yeah, so they so really, you know, look, <clears throat> I like to see the fight against Bivol, but I think if Yard has a good European I don't want to see him at domestic. I think he's beyond domestic. Sorry. He's beyond British. After seeing that performance, he's beyond British level. What do you think to uh, Frank Maloney's flares with Lennox lifting him up at threshold? No comment. I'm not going to... I, I, what I could comment, what I could say and would say wouldn't be appropriate on this channel. <laughs> Sorry, talk. Can we? Uh, all right, they're back. Let's throw a curveball at the situation. The Connor Ben situation now, since our last video. Go on. Um, I'm not being funny. I mean, they're saying about a 270 page document to the WBC. How the WBC can't ban me, all this it hasn't banned me. Look, why don't you give it? If you're not guilty, why don't you give it to all parties? Yeah. It's simple as that. Look, Julian said it on one of his videos. A guilty man doesn't run from the sea. He sprinted faster than Usain Bolt from the sea. Simple. And if he gets his license back. That's giving a signal to every boxer to take anything they want. Um, but there's going to be the argument of, oh, he's not licensed with us. Well, if that's the case, he should be licensed with you ever again. That's that's the point. Um, the way Eddie's going to sell it, <clears throat> he's going to give him a few shows in Germany, I think. Uh, something abroad first before we fight over here. That's yeah. what I think. I think it'd be on I think it'd be on an undercard at a like a Canelo show, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I think it'd be on an undercard and Canelo show, like chief 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 of uh, like, you know, support or something, bluster him, get him in the American market, then he'll bring him back over it. Yeah. Then he'll be well, not accepted. I don't think he'll ever be accepted because I think it's pissed off the British public so much. Um, and I don't like all this dummy throwing out the oh, I'm important. He's got this sense of entitlement, Connor has a very arrogant. You got nothing to be arrogant about because I'm not being funny. Chris, that uh, welterweight fight between Chris Conga and uh, uh Suman, they will both beat you up in the you know, what I mean, so I'm not being funny, and you've avoided both of them, Connor Ben. So let's leave it there. Max going in hard on Conor Ben, Max. Oh, I just don't like it. Do you know what annoys me as well? Let's say that Chris Eubank fight, let's be honest, and Callis, another thing, Callis is playing for this. He knew about this VADA testing and is willing to accept to put his... What a scumbag he is to put Chris Eubank, and the way we saw what... It was a mess after Liam Smith, really. He was a bit of a state. And that was someone who's clean or supposedly clean. Because you can tell he's a bit, he is clean, Liam Smith, because he's fleshy, you see. He's not ripped. So you can tell he's not on anything enhancement. But you're going to put someone on enha enhancements who's gained weight and got punch power and he's knocked out opponents previously who haven't never been knocked out before. And all of a sudden, you're putting him in against someone who's so weight drained. Well, if that happened, that's attempted murder. I'm sorry. The border need to make a big, hard, long look at themselves. And Caller is a promoter. He's the biggest scumbag out of all of them, letting his fighter go in. He's not protected. He's just sinking the pound note. You think Caller's been exposed as a rat doing that to Eubank? If, if I was Eubank, I wouldn't be having him as my promoter after that. You get no. what I'm saying? The, the, he, your promoter should bat for you, at least. Yeah. At least have a safe, your well-being and safety. He didn't have... He makes out that, oh, well, we didn't know about the... VAR. Yes, you did. You knew about the VADA tests. The only person who didn't was Chris Eubank himself 
24 hours, 36 hours before. He, he, I think he genuinely knew only on the story when that came out. Everyone else knew about it and they wanted to keep it under wraps. Callum's duty was to protect Chris Eubank and he doesn't. Yeah. And I think he's an utter scumbag. And if I see him, I'll fucking tell him he's a prick. I do not like Callum Sutton. I, I, he, oh, it grates on me that you do that to someone. You know what I mean? Especially, do you know another, another thing as well? You've got one Eubank's ready died. You could have potentially had another Eubank that died. You know what I'm saying? That's yeah. travesty, that. This is st- disgusting. Yeah. All right, then, Max. Calm down, Max. Max, try and put the same energy into your training sessions, Max, as you do these zooms. Right. Uh... It just, yeah, but don't you think, though? I mean, it would be a different. It's almost like we need a body on the slab for people to wake up. Yeah. That's what's waiting to happen. We need that to happen. I know that's I know that's harsh to say, but it needs to happen to think, well, well the board aren't actually fit for purpose. Bye bye, board. You know what I'm saying? Max speaking out. Well, you know, I mean, it annoys me because Robert Smith's supposed to be he makes out his integrity and he's 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 this. Well, what integrity is he giving? You know, this he's got to stand firm over this corner Ben, because if he doesn't <laughs> They're down the path. I mean, the screws as it is, I think. But I'm All, right. Great line. All right, then, Max. Calm down, Max. Deep breaths, Max. Right. <laughs> Big John Fury. Big fighting man. MI5 are watching me front moon. Oh. These 100 guys is knocked out. Has anybody come forward, Max? Because you put oh. your fingers out, that, didn't you? On your, on your Insta. Has anybody come forward? It's just... It's just nonsensical. We both... Look, he's just a he's just a comedy he's, he's just a comedy act. He's funny. Yeah. He comes out. No one takes him seriously now. Um, yeah. The only time oh, you would yeah. take him seriously if you see him actually getting a ring and fight someone. Uh, okay, Billy Joe coming back, Max. Is he gonna do? Is he gonna come back or is it just chit chat? Do you know what I hope he, I. Uh, uh, Depends who is it for? Who's gonna be who's gonna be would it be on Sky Sports the zone? Oh, Which I'm one? asking you, Max. Do you think he comes back? Christ. What yeah. about his beef with Ben Shalom, aka Benny from Crossroads? He he'll it, come back for a payday and it'll be against someone who's done. A name that's done. Yeah. Um What's your take, Max, on uh, a Coley not being trained by Johnny Bravo no more? <laughs> I feel sorry for um, Lawrence of Coley a little bit, in a way. But then again, you look at what Eddie's... like. Let's say look look at the trainer... Part of the trainer situation, there's a lot going along with him, isn't there? Because he's obviously left Eddie Hearn or trying to leave Eddie Hearn. There's obviously contract obligations in the background so you know when there's contracts obligations in the background sometimes that's a part of your trainer you know like let's say a zone sign a fighter or you must train at ben davidson's performance center you get what i'm saying yeah so you know what the contractual obligations are in the background whether who he leaves or who he gets trained by etc you get what i'm saying now what we 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 slag off Eddie a lot, and when it's Eddie season, we all go in on him. But what I will say to Eddie, he's got a boring fighter, and he doesn't excite me, Lawrence Acoli. But he's got a, a you know a boring fighter to a title, and mapped him to a title. But he doesn't fill out stadiums, and he's he's done well with him. And you can't criticize Eddie for that, can you? No, I, I suppose you can't in a way, Max. I suppose you can't. Uh, what do you see next for Josh Warrington, Max? I reckon I reckon Lee Wood's going to get absolutely battered by Lara. He'll get... It'd be like a lamb going to slaughters. Um, <clears throat> well, when you've got Ben Davis in your corner, you're only going to get beaten up, aren't you? Um, then it's going to be a double double header 
against Warrington. Lee Wood v Warrington. One in Leeds, one in Nottingham. They, they'd be both cashing out. You reckon, yeah? Yeah, I think so. I think so. Makes sense. I mean, Warrington's on the sly now. <clears throat> and then there's Sean O'Hagan moaning about unfairness and not getting a rub of the green in the last fight. But his opponent outworked him most rounds. Don't get me wrong. The, the rounds were razor sharp, but they can be razor sharp. But if your opponent's outpunched by seven clean hits, the rounds soon rack up. And they don't lie. So, but they can still be close around. And it could be, appears to be closer than it was. And I think that Sean, obviously, oh, it's all right when they've won a fight, isn't it? But I think that's sour grapes by Sean, personally. Yeah. Mm. What do you think is best trainer at UK at the moment, Max? It's a combination of two. Joe G. Um... And Peter Fury, then close under that is Adam Booth. Adam, but, then they, uh, but then you can argue, and I know that's me, this is me being biased, but you look at Julian, right? I know he's not in boxing, etc. But the active and he had his, his license back and that, you could argue he's actually as good as Joe G because <clears throat> he had Gary Sykes twice against Anthony Crawler and beat Anthony Crawler twice with him in two separate occasions with, I think, two-year like uh, gap as well. So you can argue Julian's up there in theory, you know. So bear in mind, he has a full-time job and boxer's not his full-time uh, you know, identity, you know what I'm saying? So you know, you can you can make so many arguments on that, but it's outstanding. Peter Fury, Joji, they're both the top. I won't accept anyone else at the minute, really. Yeah, what do you see next for Dylan White, Max? Christ, <laughs> he'll have a cash out against Joshua, won't he? It 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 it, it, it wait it waits as Franklin things over with because. He's fighting Franklin Joshua and Dillian White will fight Joshua and it'd be like a cash out job in. He might fight some, you know, if, he might fight his own fighter, Fabio Wardley. You never know. Yeah. Where do you see Fraser Clark going, aka it's Big Fraser? <clears throat> I'd love to see him against Fabio Wardley now. Fabio Wardley now, British title. He's there. Would you match? Yeah. Yeah. He's good enough. Yeah, do you think we're going to see Fraser fight five more bin man? No, I hope not. I hope not. If it is, it, it he's even getting pissed off with it. You can tell by his actions, where his disappointment when they're just folding in thirty seconds. He's good enough to go against Fabio Wardley now. So let's see it. Yeah, do you see Savannah fighting Clarissa next. I'd like to see. Uh, in a hardish fight against someone else or someone maybe, I don't know, slightly like get a confidence back, get a win under the belt, then go against Clarissa again. But I believe if it is against Clarissa again, I reckon it'd be a lot closer. That's what I believe. I think Pete Fury will be like, right, I'm not making that mistake. I'm not going to make any mistakes or any stones I'm turning on this one. We know what to expect because you're always wiser after the event. Yes. Yeah. Someone who's knowledgeable like Peter Fury, he will make sure it's damnedest for her to make sure that'd be a win for Savannah, I think. You reckon, yeah? Yeah, I think I think they'll do it next time around. I believe in them. Well, let's hope she changes the game plan and fights a bit more longer, eh? Keeps right under them long levers. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, but it's easier said than done in the in the you know a moment, but yeah, we we'll see, we we'll see what happens. Uh, you know. Can I, you can only try, can't you? Yeah. Uh, Max, can Curtis Woodhouse fight? Of course he can. He was a British title winner, wasn't he? Uh, Kurt, come see me. Max, who do you think... You are asking for trouble with Kurt. Hey? You are asking for trouble with Curtis. <laughs> Kurt, come see me. 
you know, he, he, the thing is, he genuinely would come and see it. You know, oh, out of every, oh. out of every, yeah, but out of everyone, we we like give crap. We've given crap to in like the past and that. He's a genuine guy. Will come up and go where you are, base. Yeah, come see me. Put me out of my misery. Right, Max. On to things more important than that. Do you think the British title has lost a bit of coolness? In certain divisions, yeah. Yeah, in which divisions? Um, see, I think, see, it was a time when the English title, when we, okay, let's look at both sides, English title under it. That used to be a lot of kudos around the English title. That but that's dig- yeah, but that's digging with down. That's gone downhill. Um, but the British now, people tend to skip it. Look at what Conor Ben's tried try to do. Um, it was a time. There's a time where it was honourable. So, in this given time, especially now, yeah, and they're trying to skip it. Um, I, I liked it when it was the Carl Froch days and how he did it. You know, he went all the. You know what I mean? It was better. And I think it's the where when you've got the British, you fought everyone domestically. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, it's losing a bit of appeal for me, and I don't want it to be like that because. British title is supposed to be something that's special, isn't it, in boxing? It's tradition, isn't it? And it's losing a bit of tradition. Yeah. At the moment, it's everything else coming into boxing. It's the whole mix. I know, and, and all these YouTubers are, are, are like let, are giving them airtime and stuff. Exactly. Fight, uh, fights and that. It's starting to fry me head a bit, Max. I'm starting to turn to Mecca. <laughs> Mecca. <laughs> like that bloke is scum. I've just watched that film, ah, scum. He goes right. to Govern and he goes, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm uh, slightly uh, drawn to Mecca. He goes, Mecca? <laughs> yeah? <laughs> Mecca? But, uh, okie dokie then, Max. Well, listen, thanks for coming on. Yeah. Having a bit of banter with me and blowing a bit of steam off. I hope you're well. And good luck in your training camp for your next fight as a fight academy fighter, fighting on fight zone for big... Ron and Crumpy. Crumpy. Right, <laughs> right, yeah, no worries, mate. Thank you for See you, Max. Bye. No, cheers, mate. Bye. Well, that was that weapon, Max. He's coming back. He's putting you all on notice. I don't know where he's coming back from. But hey-ho, beware. Because with the chat, he's been chatting to Big Ron. He's going to kill us all in our beds. But, it's the same hype that I heard when David Price were were uh, was, was stalking streets like Godzilla, you know, back in the day. So till he ran into a tiger. Okie dokie, okie dokie, okie dokie. All right, peace out. Big shout out, welcome estates. Bye before the boom. Big shout out, Spartan Demolition. You know that. You're taking over the big, the number one, and Booyaka!